What's cracking, y'all? You are now watching Boo TV. Appreciate you for stopping in. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, stay notified, and let's get into the topic for today. Back in the wonderful reaction video world of Michael Jeffrey Jordan. Got one right here from the uh, YouTube channel Basketball Universe. Proving Michael Jordan is a GOAT without a single scoring stat. Now, I've recorded or I've reacted to a few videos in the past, handful, uh, where they provide the stats that prove MJ's the GOAT, but this one I found interesting because we often look at the scoring stats with Mike because he was such a dynamic, all-time, legendary scorer that many people overlooked all the other aspects of his game. Michael Jordan, make no mistake about it, was a complete basketball player and did whatever his team needed him to do. People forget there was a time where the point guard situation wasn't working out in Chicago and it was called upon Michael Jordan to be the uh, point guard for the Chicago Bulls. This is before Phil Jackson. Now, in that span, I don't remember the exact number, but he had like over 10 triple doubles. And during that time, he averaged, I think, over 30 points, double digit rebounds, and almost double digit assists. He almost averaged a triple double during that span. Like, Michael Jordan had all the tools. Was it his preferred style of play? No, but if he needed to hold on to the ball more, monopolize the ball more, be more of a de facto point guard, could he do it and do it at a very high level? Yes. I'm just saying, the dude could do anything. And on top of that, he was a fantastic all-time defensive player, especially at his position. Come on, man. Kind of, I, I've been, I say the same thing about Kobe, man. He was more than just a scorer. But people are so fascinated with the scoring, that's the only thing they look at. He's a facilitator, he's a playmaker, he's a passer, he's a rebounder, he's a defensive player. He can move off ball, he can do a lot of things. But anyway, I've always been more of an eye test guy than a stat guy. I take the stats, I try to get the context, but I also like to see and evaluate what my eyes are telling me. Let's get into this video. 59th and 60th points. He's got him. 60 points for Jordan. Jordan. 63 points, and you're looking at an all-time record. For the shot clock in the game, but Jordan, yes, and And Michael Jordan with 55 points for the second highest total in an NBA Finals game. Oh my God, stop. For real, just stop with the scoring highlights and numbers. It's not fair that no one can match Jordan's scoring prowess. It's not fair that he broke all those records during the defensive era of the NBA. It's simply not fair that no one from this week defensive era can match his scoring output. In all seriousness, we all know how legendary of a scorer he was. That was his biggest strength, but that doesn't mean that was his only strength. Scoring isn't the only reason why many basketball experts believe he's the GOAT. So I'm gonna answer the challenge and not mention a single scoring stat for this video. Little do they know that this will only make his go case stronger. Let's start with the total opposite of scoring, playing defense. Michael Jordan took that role as seriously as scoring the ball. That's why he was able to obtain so many defensive accolades and records. He is unquestionably one of the greatest perimeter defenders of all time. He has nine All-NBA defensive first team selections. That is an all-time record that he shares with Gary Payton, Kobe Bryant, and Kevin Garnett. Let's move to the steals department. He's third all-time in career steals per game and fourth in career steals. Now, what about blocks? That is a stat that is dominated by centers and forwards. Guards just don't have an impact on that aspect of the game. That's a statement that can't be said about Jordan. He has the most career blocks by any guard ever. Now let's talk about advanced metrics, more specifically, defensive win shares. This is another metric that is dominated by big men. In fact, only three guards appear in the top 30 for career defensive win shares. Among those players is Michael Jordan. He is 21st all time and third among all guards. The two guards ahead of him is John Stockton, who played 432 more games, and Jason Kidd, who played 319 more games. So let me get this straight. The record nine All-NBA defensive first team selections proves that he's one of the greatest individual defenders. 
finishing the top five in career steals and finishing number one in blocks among guards confirms that. Then the fact that he's third among guards in career defensive win shares is just a sherry on top. The numbers say that he's one of the most viable defensive assets a team could ever have. And yet, I still don't think this is enough. So let's get some testimonials from players who witness his defensive greatness. Let's start with a former teammate, BJ Armstrong. He mentioned this to ESPN back in 2020. Quote, in my mind, Michael was actually a defensive player who also happened to be an exceptionally talented offensive player. In many ways, he knew the game on that side of the ball better. The way he moved, anticipated, and invented ways to score based on what he saw on the defense event. He never cheated the process. End of quote. Then we have what Christian Leitner said to Dan Patrick in 2024. My first impression of Jordan and my lasting impression of Jordan is how much effort he put forth on the defensive end. Michael Jordan was the greatest defender also. And, and look at the effort Kobe Bryant put forth on the defensive end. And that's where the differences are made. We mentioned the stats and testimonials. We also have individual accolades that he won. For example, he won the Defensive Player of the Year Award in 1988. Recent events have caused many detractors to question if he was truly deserving of winning that award. This hasn't phased me one bit. Here's what I know. In 1986, when Jordan missed nearly 80% of the season, the Bulls had the worst defensive rating in the league. In the following year, they jumped all the way up to 11th. And in 1988, they had the third best defensive rating. Michael Jordan deserves all the credit for that improvement. Here's why. In 1987 and 1988, he led his team in steals and blocks. Let me say that again. A shooting guard was their best rim protector while also creating easy offense with his steals. He did that for two straight seasons. Do you realize how rare it is for a guard to be the team leader of those stats? If they gifted him a few undeserving steals to his stat sheet, who cares? That doesn't change the fact that he was unquestionably their most valuable defensive player. I could stop right here and you would hear everything you would need to know to debunk such an asinine statement. Michael Jordan was much more than just a great scorer. You could even say that he was just as good of a defender. That's what made him the greatest two-way player of all time. That's debatable. I'm a Jordan guy. I think Jordan's the GOAT. But when you talk about offense, defense, best two-way player of all time, there's other, there's other players you got. Like, I'm not sure if he's better two-way than Hakeem, um, especially long-term. Especially, especially long-term. I'm not sure. Really not sure. And there's there's some other players you can throw in there as well. But definitely at the two guard position or even the guard position, I, I don't know who who would you consider to be a better two way player? And I, I hate that word. I I hate the word two way basketball player, especially these days, because they try to separate it's like, oh, he's not the best player in the world, but he's the best two way player in the world. But wait, since when did defense not become a part of your player profile and you have to put this person in a different category? I, I can't I can't stand it. I can't stand it. But anyway, Michael Jordan was a pit bull, man. A hound dog. But stopping here would be a disservice to the GOAT because there was so much more to his game that needs to be addressed. For example, he was always considered one of the best all-around players in the league throughout his playing career. We all know what he accomplished on the defensive event. Now let's take a look at the offensive event. We're going to be looking to the 1984-85 season, Jordan's rookie year, to the 1997-98 season, Jordan's last year with the Bulls. During that span, here are the number of times that player averaged at least 6 rebounds and 5 assists in a season. 
The player with the most is Clyde Trexler. He did it 10 times. Next up is Scotty Pippen. He did it eight times. Third on that list is Michael Jordan. He did it seven times. He did it as many times as Larry Bird, who also did it seven times. The next player up is Magic Johnson, who did it six times. So if you take away the scoring, Jordan was still contributing in many other ways. Let's keep in mind that the 80s and 90s were different times in the NBA. Positionless players were not something that existed during that era. Every player had a role. If you were in the front court, your job was to grab rebounds and block shots. If you were the point guard, your job was to facilitate. If you were the shooting guard, there weren't going to be many opportunities to boost your numbers in those categories. Players such as Michael and Clyde Trexler were the exception. They had the necessary skills to excel in everything. If you look at each season of his playing career, he was consistently one of the highest producing rebounders and facilitators for his position. We're talking right out of the gate in his rookie season. He finished first among shooting guards and rebounds. In 1989, he finished first for his position in assist. In 1993, he was once again first in rebounds. And in 1998, he finished first in rebounds for his position. Don't be fooled by the numbers. The 80s and 90s were a different time. Even with the limited opportunities to contribute in other facets of the game, yeah. he still found a way to get hits. It wasn't long rebounds back then. There were bigger players back in. There were more physicality back in. Listen, there's a lot of factors working against rebounding statistics for guards back then. In many ways, it was much more difficult to be an all-around player during that time. If he played during this era or the 60s era, his numbers would also be inflated. But if you look closely at his game and the numbers, you'll see how great he was at every aspect of the game. He just also happens to be the greatest scorer and greatest playoff performer. You mix that with his 6-0 finals record and you'll get the greatest player of all time. That is how you successfully defeat a challenge. Can you all do the same? Comment below on why Michael Jordan is the GOAT without mentioning any scoring stats. If you don't think he's the greatest of all time, let me know why down below. As always, thanks for watching. Michael Jordan. Great job there by Basketball Universe. Listen, I've been on the record. I've said it time and time again. I don't, I don't know how much more I can say this stuff. <laughs> Michael Jordan was more than a score, and it drives me crazy. Like, you'll sit here and watch Nick Wright try to, when he get into his Jordan versus LeBron things, and he's like, oh, in his squeaky-ass voice, oh, LeBron James is the overall score, brew. Michael Jordan was a score. Was a score. No, Michael Jordan was an all-around basketball player. But it's so amazing that that's all you can think about was the scoring. That tells you how ridiculously good he was at it and fascinating at it. Oh, I can't even talk right now. He was such a phenomenal scorer, and you are so fascinated with it that you can't even, for a second, observe and realize all the other facets of his game that, he's a, that he excels at and that he's masterful at. That should tell you everything you need to know about MJ, Nick Wright, or should I say Nick Wrong. Oh, that guy's voice is so annoying. But hey, that's just my opinion, I guess. Me personally, I've never seen a better basketball player than Michael Jordan. And maybe one day before I pass away, maybe I will see Somebody that I can be like, oh, that guy is the greatest of all time. Who knows? Will it be Victor Wimbanyama? You know? Who will it be? I don't know. But, hey, when I got a guy that for the length of his career played both sides of the court at a very high level, did all the winning he did, the lore, the aura, everything, it's just like... Uh, that's that's Mike's that Mike's that guy. Mike's that guy. 
I really appreciate him for uh, pointing out all the other things. And you could make, you could probably do a, a, a two-hour video talking about Mike's skill set and his accolades and his records and his stats without scoring. If you really wanted to dig into the numbers and present a narrative, like you, like you know who always like to do, check out our Michael Jordan playlist. I appreciate y'all for stepping in. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, stay notified. Catch you on the next one. Yeah, baby.